Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 34 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now before we end this discussion, the last topic that I would like to touch upon is the linkage group. Now we spoke so much about linkage, so we should also be aware of what is a linkage group. So all the genes which are located on a chromosome constitute one linkage group. So that means all the genes that are located on the same chromosome, they will be part of one linkage group. Now what about the homologous chromosomes? So the two homologous chromosomes also constitute the same linkage group because in the homologous chromosomes also the same sequence of genes are present. So they all belong to the same linkage group. Now the question is how do we know that how many linkage groups are present in an organism? Now as I said if both the homologous chromosomes are part of one linkage group that means the number of pairs of homologous chromosomes which are present in an organism is going to be equal to the number of linkage group. For example, if you consider human beings and that is why we say that number of chromosomes is equal to, I mean this is not number of chromosomes, this is going to be number of linkage group is going to be equal to the haploid number of chromosomes. So if you take the example of human beings, so how many total chromosomes do we have? We have total 46 chromosomes. So we have 23 pairs of homologous chromosome. Correct? So how many linkage group do we have? So we will have 23 linkage group because both the pair of homologous chromosome, they are under one linkage group. So basically the number of pairs of homologous chromosome or you can see the haploid number of chromosome that is half the total number of chromosomes that is equal to the linkage group. Similarly, if you take the example of the pea plant, so how many chromosomes they had? They had a total of 14 chromosomes. So how many pairs? 7 pairs. So they have 7 linkage group. If you consider the drosophila which was used by Morgan in his experiments, they had four pairs of chromosomes, therefore four linkage groups are present here. So therefore the linked genes should not follow the law of independent assortment as given by Mendel, Mendel until and unless they get separated by the crossing over mechanism. So only because of crossing over the recombinants can be formed but otherwise linked genes would not follow the law of independent assortment. Because linked genes always like to get inherited together and they do not want to be segregated from each other. Now based on all the discussions which we did on uh, the various uh, areas on which Morgan had worked starting from sex linked inheritance to linkage uh, to uh, the gene mapping. So we finally will see what were the things that were stated as part of the Morgan's theory of chromosomal linkage because linkage was one big area where Morgan spent a lot of time understanding it and uh, for coming out with the rules. So let us quickly summarize the Morgan's theory of chromosomal linkage. As per this theory, linked genes occur on the same chromosome. So there are genes which are on the same chromosome and they have some physical linkage with each other and that allows them to get inherited together and making the recombinations less. Parental combination maintained except for crossing overs. Now parent, most of the time the, the offsprings prefer to be like parents but since crossing over takes place therefore recombinations are introduced. So the recombination or crossing over happens because of incomplete linkage. Strength of a linkage is inversely proportional to recombination. So if the linkage is very strong then there will be no recombination but if the linkage is weaker then there is more possibility of the recombination and that is why the percentage of recombination it varies from uh, one organism to another it also varies from one trait to another because it all depends on the uh, linkage between the genes frequency of crossing over is directly proportional to the distance between them now how frequently will they cross over that again depends upon the distance so let us suppose that if they are very close to each other right so if the distance between them is very less then the frequency of crossing over will also be less because they will not cross over very frequently but if their distance is more distance between the two genes is more then the frequency of crossing over is also more so more frequency of recombinations thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online
Oral Test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.